The short answer to this question is that it's hard to find work as an internationally trained lawyer, but at the same time, it's hard to find work as a Canadian law school graduate as well. So overall, if you are applying for a job or articling position or an entry level position, it is hard to get into the market and um, it's not just you, but overall, especially now during COVID-19, um, when there are not a lot of jobs out there and people have, uh, some people have lost their jobs. So overall, you know, everybody is having a hard time looking for work. Having said that, I understand that, you know, internationally trained lawyers can have a harder time looking for work because of some reasons. And today I want to focus on those reasons and provide you with a way to get around them. So in this video, I would like to provide you with three reasons why internationally trained lawyers find it harder uh, to look for work. Um, and I will also tell you how you can get around those obstacles and how you can try to overcome them. But remember that overall, even if you're a Canadian law graduate or you're an internationally trained lawyer, um, it, it is very hard right now to look for work. <laughs> reason why internationally trained lawyers find it harder to look for work is because they don't have a network in Canada. Um, if you go to a Canadian law school or even if you go, if you, even if you do the LLM at Osgood, you still know um, professors, you still know a lot of different people who are from the legal community um, and you are able to make those connections, you're able to tell people that you're looking for, for a position or you want to get into a specific area of law. Um, for somebody who just moved here and is writing the NCA exams and did not do the LLM, it's harder in the sense because you're, you're, not, you're not able to connect with the community as much as you'd like to. And um, this is a big disadvantage because you only learn from people who are experienced and people who have gone through, uh, you know, different different uh, steps for the lawyer licensing process. Now, if you don't know a lot of people, then it can become harder in small network or having no network at all can, can make it difficult for an internationally trained lawyer to look for work. Now, on the other hand, I've also seen some JD students and JD students are, are, are students who go to Canadian law schools. You know, sometimes some students are, go to Canadian law schools, but they still don't, you know, have a network, but some people do have a network. So the point is that no matter who you are, if you're a JD student or you're an internationally trained lawyer, the point is to make a network and to be able to talk to people, connect with them, help them out if you can, and then ask, um, you know, for help if you're looking for positions or you're trying to enter the market. Now. Having said that, this is a problem, but there's a way to fix this problem. And, you know, it's a skill that you learn and it's not that you will never overcome this problem. Um, all you have to do is obviously try to build a network in Canada and try to talk to as many lawyers as you can. Uh, back in the day, there were a lot of networking events. I remember going to, you know, a whole bunch of them, meeting new people. And when you see people, you remember their faces. Uh, but now, if that's not the case, you know, you can still attend uh, different uh, events. There are workshops and you can you can sign up on, you know, if you go to if you like a law firm, you want to practice that area, you can sign up for this for their newsletters. Um, sometimes they have Zoom conference calls where they talk about that area of law. So you want to just go there, attend that, talk to people, send them a follow up email um, and connect with people on LinkedIn and let them know you know, why you want to be a part of their network and what is it that they can do to help you. So networking is really important. And back in the day when people used to tell me this, you know, I never understood what networking really means. It's not about how many people you know. It's about those meaningful connections that you make. So if I have, let's just say, 300 connections on my LinkedIn, do I have a meaningful connection with all of them? Um, and when I say meaningful connection, that means that, you know, you, you've had a conversation with them, um, you know, you're able to connect with them, you're able to learn from them, you're, you're curious in terms of what, why they're doing what they're doing. So these are some of my tips in order to grow your network. Um, again, as things start to get better, uh, you know, you can attend a lot of events, you can go out and see 
you know, lawyers and the legal community in person, which is always better than, you know, remotely. But the idea here is to build a network, talk to people, talk about their struggles, talk about, you know, how can they help you maybe understand which area you're interested in. So don't ever hesitate to ask for help. Some people are busy, they won't reply, which is fine. But, you know, a lot of people are willing to help and, you know, just, just asking. Sometimes um, as students, we're just too afraid to ask, but that's the only way you're going to get it. If you don't ask, uh, nobody's ever going to know that you need help. A reason why internationally trained lawyers find it harder to look for work is, and this is just my personal opinion, I think that internationally trained lawyers, first of all, don't know how to present themselves to an employer in a way that their skills are needed. So when you are an internationally trained lawyer, you feel like, you know, I'm new here, I don't have a lot of experience here, you know, maybe I'm not, I don't have a lot of skills to sell myself or when I go talk to an employer, I don't know what to talk about because I don't have any work experience. So that's where I I think that it's it's wrong to think that way. You should not do that because no matter where you're from or whatever experience that you have, at the end of the day, you still have a personality and your personality is you have to present your way in a self where you know, for instance, you're curious, you know how to ask the right questions, you're able to communicate to the employer or anyone that you're talking to, what skills do you bring to the table? It's not just about, hey, you know, I need a job, um, hire me, or I'm looking for work, uh, give me anything, I'll do anything. If you say that, you're not positioning yourself in a way where the employer is going to believe in you. So so one of the ways that you could fix this is, and if you're not doing it, great, but if you are, you want to try to present yourself in a way where you look like you have a per Like, the employer is able to understand who you are. Everybody has a lot of skills that they bring to the table, but it's just that you don't present yourself in a way where you tell the employer that, hey, you know, and again, this is just an example. If if you're an international trained lawyer, and let's just say you went to law school in a different country, you can present yourself uh, to the employer in a way where you can say, hey, you know, I have moved countries. I was able to navigate my path. Um, I was able to pass these exams, pass the NC exams on my own. So I have the skill where I can figure out things on my own. I don't need somebody to, you know, walk. I don't need, like, I'm independent enough to... Right. If you give me a task, I will figure it out. So that's how you can combine, you know, experiences. If you don't have Canadian experience, you can combine experiences to present yourself in a way where it's like, you know, you know what you're talking about. So please try to position yourself in a way where the employer can see who you are, what skills you bring to the table. And you just can't say that, hey, you know, I am very organized. I am a team player without stating examples. So you have to... Think about these examples, even if you don't, again, I'm stressing on the fact, if you don't have Canadian experience, it's fine, try to get it. If you don't, you can still use some of your experiences in the past to show what skills you bring to the table. The last reason why internationally trained lawyers find it hard to find work is, is that they don't believe in themselves. And I've spoken to a lot of foreign graduates and sometimes they feel that they don't believe in themselves. Um, and again, I was in the same position um, at some point in my life where I thought that, you know, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I'm not smart enough, maybe I just don't know anything. Uh, maybe, you know, when you go to Canadian law school, they train you differently and, you know, there's something that I've missed out and I God knows how I will ever learn it. So, you know, I should just just pretend or just be somebody who's who's not, I guess, good enough. But that's not true. Um, having been through the process and having met so many different students, foreign graduates, Canadian uh, law school graduates, lawyers, mentors, um, you know, you have to believe in yourself. You do have skills. Um, and it's just, a, it's just the way that you present yourself. And, you know, the moment you start believing in yourself and the moment you understand that, hey, I have something I can offer to an employer and that employer could be big or small. You know, this is not for, you know, it's not about big firm, small firm, whatever. If you can offer some value 
um, to a firm or an organization, you have to believe in yourself. Because when you go into an interview and you start talking about, you know, who you are and what you do and why you're interested, if you don't believe in yourself, the other person can see it. When I talk to people and, you know, when they're talking to me, I can I can tell if if they're saying it just because, you know, they want to say it or they're saying it because they actually believe in themselves. And confidence is always good. Um, obviously, you don't want to be overconfident, but when you, when you talk to an employer and you are presenting yourself, you always want to be confident in the sense that, hey, you know, if I'm saying that I can, I'm a team player, I know that I'm a team player, and, you know, I can work well with people, and, you know, if I'm, I'm in a group, you know, I will be able to handle uh, different projects and, you know, effectively work in a team. So believe in yourself. And um, everyone at the end of the day, I mean, the process is hard. Finding work is hard overall. But, you know, the first thing you can do at least is believe in yourself. And once you do that, you know, you will, you will find it easier to even have a conversation with other people and also find it easier to just be yourself at the end of the day. So this was helpful. I wanted to communicate this to, to people who are looking for work because, you know, it's not just you. Or, or or your friends or anyone it's it's just right now everyone is finding hard um, to look for work and if you are internationally trained lawyers I hope that these tips are helpful and um, you know if you want to communicate something to other people just please comment below if you're able to find a job or if you were able to find a position that was your dream position uh, please comment below and let other people know how you approached it or some tips that might be useful um, to, to foreign graduates. Um, this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about um, the the law practice program, uh, which is the LPP at the Ryerson um, University. I'm going to talk about the program and tell you, you know, what why I decided to do the law practice program, uh, my honest review of the program, and if you have any questions regarding that, comment below, and I'll try to take up those questions in my next video.